it's like every day that passes by, I feel some type of way, a different type of way when we talk about D'Angelo Russell and the Lakers, what they need to be doing. Like, what do y'all feel, honestly, at this point today about D'Angelo Russell? I look back, man, in, in lineups last year where we had D'Angelo Russell and Cam Reddish sharing the court together last season at the point guard and the shooting guard positions respectfully through, I believe, like over 630 possessions, the Lakers were a plus 7.7 point differential on the year. The usual starting lineup when you include um, Austin Reeves in that mix instead of Cam, when you had D'Lo, Austin Reeves, Rui, LeBron, and AD, they were only a plus 6.8. So I also told y'all how I felt last year. Remember when Cam Reddish had took over the spot for Austin Reeves temporarily, the Lakers moved up to a top 10 defense. I don't think that the D'Angelo Russell, Austin Reeves experiment really is going to work. To me, there's too much of a liability on defense when we talk about our backcourt. Offensively, they definitely gives us some moments. But I don't know. And then it seems like when we talk about D'Angelo Russell specifically, every day, every couple days, there's another report coming out about how the Lakers are interested in, you know, moving him and, and, and they out here shopping. I don't know really what for. I don't know really what player is out there. I could pull up the um, free agent list as far as the remaining guys. And, it, and as far as trades go, if it's not a star, if it's not someone that really can change life, I've been disappointed with D'Angelo Russell in the past, but I don't want to get rid of D'Lo uh, just for a risk or just to chance it. Guys like Zach Levine and all that, like I know what they're about. Trey Young, I know what they're about. I just don't know if they fit well with this team. And I don't know if I really want to give up D'Angelo Russell for an experiment, especially in LeBron James' last days. This report by Lakers Daily talk about how D'Lo is, is not seen as part of the Lakers' core moving forward. And that it just confuses me, bro. I don't understand for multiple reasons. If you're disappointed in the fact that D'Lo, when we really need him the most in the playoffs and stuff like that, how he doesn't show up, I can't argue about that. I can't campaign about that. But is it just the Denver Nuggets matchup? Or are we saying that D'Lo is a real choke artist when we get down to March and in April? Because I don't believe that. I love the way D'Lo fits with this team. I love the chemistry he has with, you know, Anthony Davis. I love how he doesn't necessarily need LeBron on the court to be productive. I've seen some of his best play when LeBron is coming off of the or not on the court at the time. So, you know, as, as far as D'Lo being an asset or a liability to the Lakers organization, you know, we could definitely get improvement, but we could get improvement on all positions. This team ain't really stacked like that. Um, and I feel like D'Lo, once again, may get the short end of the stick being a part of this Lakers organization. Last year, his name was in trade rumors, and he really stepped it up in the second half of the year. I think he played a pivotal role in the Lakers um, run in the second half of the year last season. But once we got down to the playoffs, you know, he had that horrific game, game three. I think he went scores in game three versus the Denver Nuggets. So it has been bad for D'Lo when the Lakers needed him. But through an 82-game stretch, I don't know if there's anybody out there available that's better than him. And I say that respectfully. And when I say better, maybe I'll say more of a fit. The Lakers only played 22 possessions last year with Cam Reddish at the power forward spot. The results were pretty interesting uh, due to limited sample size, but Dinwiddie was a part of both lineups next to D'Lo and Austin Reeves. Imagine that with being Gabe Vincent. Like, ah, this nasty, nasty work. I don't know, man. I I I I'm, I want to stick with D'Angelo Russell, really. You know, I don't. I'm not trying to put it out there like he's untouchable, but I think he's he's more he he can definitely help this team. I'm starting him. I'm bringing Austin Reeves probably off the bench. 
I'm bringing Rui Hachimura off the bench. I'm definitely going to try to shake some things up. But as far as him not being the core of this future of the team, especially right now, why not? I just don't see any light at the end of the tunnel. And then, you know, all these injuries we got with, you know, Vando and Christian Wood and it's 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 just not that great of a look. It's not. So I guess it really boils down to it like what's the, what's the big, biggest beef with Austin with um D'Angelo Russell? Do we feel like he a choke artist? Is his trade value really that much? I don't know. The lineup is going to be a, a lineup that I believe is going to be a very shaky one. We don't have a nice roster as it is on paper. Even if everyone was available, we still don't even have a, a designated or certified center. We're still forcing Anthony Davis to play um, a position that's not his true position, a position that he's accepted but never embraced. Anthony Davis have never embraced playing the five, and nor should he. I would really love the Lakers to really fight to get a solidified big man so LeBron James and Anthony Davis can play their true positions. We've been really uh, singing that song to the choir for the longest time. So keeping it real, Seth, I wouldn't be surprised just to be on the safe side if the Lakers run it right back with the same starting five, D'Lo, Austin Reeves, and that shit is not going to work defensively. They're going to bring Rui more than likely starting because who else we got to start unless you're going to throw Dalton Connect to the Wolves. And um, I, I definitely project Dalton Connect to get a lot of opportunities early on in the season. But, you know, he's a little bit of a defensive liability. He's going to have to adjust to the speed of the game. A lot of people are expecting Dalton Connect to kind of take that spot over that Torrin Prince had. Um, I think it's going. he's going to need some time um, to get that done. Then you got to consider people like Bronny James. Like, I know people really don't expect to see Bronny James that much, but when you look at this roster, how depleted it is, some of these young guys who we really didn't have any expectations for, they might need to actually do something sooner than later. They may have to do something sooner than later, and, and um, I'm not sure what J.J. Reddit in this staff is going to do with the pieces that they got. Keep in mind, LeBron, Anthony Davis, and Rui, they all were just over in Paris playing in the Olympics. So we don't know, honestly, how gassed these guys are going to be um, if these guys will be playing in training camp. We got preseason is, what, 23 days away from the preseason. I think the Lakers kick things off versus Kevin Durant and the Phoenix Suns. Um, but, you know, D'Lo... I, I would hate to see uh, the Lakers rush things for whatever reason and get rid of D'Angelo Russell and don't really get anything back in return. You know, um, I wouldn't be upset with the Lakers if they just went down with the ship. And even if we lost, you know, just stick with it. For all the latest news and debates on the Los Angeles Lakers, be sure to subscribe here to the Lakers Land platform.